Hey, it's Rishabh and I'm back with some brain fuel. So Interstellar just released and it has been getting some kick-ass reviews. I haven't seen it yet because it hasn't released in India. But in this video, let's talk about Interstellar travel and if it is possible like in Christopher Nolan's movie. So keep watching. Interstellar literally means in between stars. And the closest star to our solar system is Alpha Centauri. It is about 25 trillion miles close to us. Let's not try to count the zeros. It is basically 300,000 times the distance between Earth and Sun. Light, the fastest thing that we know, takes about 4.35 years to cover that distance. To put things in perspective, the farthest any man-made object has ever traveled in the space is Voyager 1. It took Voyager 36 years to just exit the solar system and enter interstellar space while traveling faster than the speed of sound. We need to be much, much faster than that to even imagine traveling interstellar. The problem is the amount of energy that it takes to do that. To accelerate one ton of mass to even one tenth the speed of light takes 125 billion kilowatt hours. Now, how much is that? That's the amount of energy that's enough to power the whole of the United States for 30,000 years. It is for reasons like these that some scientists doubt the possibility of interstellar travel at least in our near future. But for the sake of this video, let's say we have the means and technology, how exactly do we make it happen? There are several proposed methods as to how we can travel interstellar. One of them is the generation ship, which in my opinion is the most impractical one. So the concept is that we build an enormous ship which is self-contained and send out a bunch of people. These people may never step foot on any other planet, but they will have kids, who will in turn have kids, who will in turn have kids, until the ship reaches a habitable planet. There are so many sociological, biological and economical problems involved with this that it's almost impossible. Also, it's doubtful if the descendants will actually remember the purpose of being on board the ship. Very much like in Robert Heinlein's novel Orphans of the Sky. The descendants of the original crew forget the purpose of being on the ship and they fall back into a pre-technological culture filled with superstition. They come to think of the ship itself as the universe and references to the ship's voyage are interpreted as religious metaphors. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend that you should. Another way of traveling interstellar is with the help of suspended animation. You've probably seen this in movies like 2001 A Space Odyssey, Prometheus and Planet of the Apes. The basic concept is to put the crew of the ship into a state of hibernation and cryonic suspension, which basically means preserving the body at a very low temperature. Very much like what happened with Khan in Star Trek Into Darkness. If biological advancements allow this, we could actually send out sleeper ships where the passengers will remain in hibernation for a long time and wake up when needed. But one of the most exciting methods which has been popularized by science fiction is traveling through wormholes, like what Cooper does in Interstellar. A wormhole is a tunnel in space-time which connects two points in space that can be really far from each other. Now, there is no observational evidence that they exist for real, but you can't disprove their existence either. Something known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge is a wormhole that is created due to the immense warping of space-time due to the effects of a black hole. Light falls into a black hole, travels through the wormhole and comes out from the other end that is a white hole. White hole is quite similar to a black hole, but instead of sucking material in, it repels material out from the inside. But then there's the question of how safe will it be to travel through a wormhole because we've never been in one. And again, there's no way of telling where exactly will it take you. So even if wormholes do exist, I doubt if we will ever find a way to use them. But then again, I would like to quote Cooper from Interstellar. We'll find a way. We always have. So yeah, let's just be optimistic and hope that someday we travel at warp speed and boldly go where no one has gone before. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it and subscribe to Quick Brain Fuel because we upload new videos every Thursday. I'll see you next time.